also thank you very much to the Jewish community of Berlin who is hosting us today and also thanks to Sigi Königsberg who, who is a co-host of this uh, event and unfortunately he cannot be with us uh, right now but we already talked today uh, a lot about contemporary anti-Semitism. Um, I met Rafael Pankowski um, first time in 2015 in Jerusalem um, at a conference uh, where we also met of course uh, Robert Wistrich uh, sadly, that was the last time we both saw him. For him, it was the first and last time, and for me, it was the last time we saw him um, on, a, on a first day uh, at this uh, conference. Um, Rafael uh, is a co-founder of the, uh, he, he will talk a little bit more later, I think, but I will already mention this briefly. He was a co-founder of the NGO Never Again in 1996, uh, which in some way relates to my own experience in uh, uh, anti-fascist work where I was in 1992 for a few years member of, a, of an anti-fascist group in the south of Germany dealing with um, with the legacy of Nazi uh, Germany. Um, Robert Ristrich, uh, as many know, was born in Kazakhstan in 1945, but his grandparents and his uh, family came from Krakow, Poland. At that time it was Austrian Hungary. Uh, his mother tongue was Polish, so this talk tonight would have been very interesting, I think, for, for Robert also, uh, because he, he spoke Polish all his life with his mother. I already uh, showed Mr. Kisling this photograph. Is this a, I can show it around. This is a photograph, a historical photograph of Sabina Wistrich, which was the mother of Robert and Robert. And at that time, she was a 100-year-old, and this was the time when she made Aliyah to Israel, which was a huge event at Ben Gurion Airport when she came from London. Um, and uh, I already mentioned <laughs> in an interview with the Jerusalem Post, uh, Sabina Wistrich said she wanted to learn a seventh language, uh, that means Hebrew, which she never learned. Uh, however, Polish and the history of Polish Jews was very important uh, for Robert Wistrich. Uh, because when he was a child in England, he first spoke Polish and, and French, so Poland uh, was very important. Sabina Wistrich, his mother, already left her first home in Poland uh, during the First World War. That means in 1914, over 100 years ago, um, when her home was destroyed in the First World War. After the First World War, she already uh, realized uh, as a children, as a child, uh, seven or nine years old, um, anti-Semitism in Poland. And um, in 1939, the, the beginning of the Second World War, she fled the Germans uh, <coughs> and she, she went to the Soviet Union uh, where she was arrested, but of course she, she survived. And then she returned to Poland after the end of the Second World War and most of her belongings were stolen, uh, besides a few things which uh, with a friend uh, uh, cared her, uh, of her, and then she moved from Poland to England in 1946 or so. Um, as a scholar, Robert Ristrich also dealt with Poland, and I want to make a few remarks about this, because I think it's interesting how deep uh, the knowledge of Polish anti-Semitism was uh, in Robert's uh, work. Uh, in his book, which many of you might know, A Little Obsession from 2010, which is the most important book on the history of anti-Semitism of our time, um, he has several remarks which are really interesting about Poland uh, and anti-Semitism in Poland. For example, uh, Robert deals with Tadeusz Ryczyk, uh, the one of the co-founders of Radio Maria, uh, I think Rafael might, uh, might mention Radio Maria at some point, uh, which is a very influential uh, radio station, uh, which is uh, far-right, anti-Semitic, anti-Roma, uh, and Holocaust denial and Holocaust distortion are topics often um, introduced in that radio station. For example, and this is an example I really want to emphasize, uh, in 2007, uh, Ritschik uh, mentioned that Jews are greedy concerning uh, the memory of the Holocaust. Um, and there was outrage in Poland at the time, 11 years ago. Uh, 700, Robert mentions, 700 
other Polish people were outraged about this anti-Semitic rant by Reverend uh, Ryczyk. Uh, but on the other side, a few weeks later, on August 5th, 2007, uh, Reverend Ryczyk was uh, invited by the German Pope Benedict and he made handshakes with him at Castel Gondorfo. That means the Pope, uh, for German descent, uh, embraced that kind of anti-Jewish feelings of this uh, Radio Maria um, uh, referent Ritschik. And the very same Pope Ratzinger was inaugurated as an archbishop in 1977 by two nasty uh, German Catholics they were members of, a, of an organization, which I myself am dealing currently with, which is called Association New Germany, in German Bund Neu Deutschland. And uh, they were very pro-Nazi and anti-Semitic. And among the three bishops who inaugurated Mr. Ratzinger at the time were two members of this very anti-Jewish and Catholic uh, association Bund Neu Deutschland, a Mr. Josef Stangl and a Rudolf Garber. So you have a connection with pro-Nazi, anti-Semitic Catholics who inaugurated Mr. Ratzinger as an archbishop and decades later Mr. Ratzinger became um, Pope and embraced a Polish anti-Semite. Um, Wistrich also deals in his book with, for example, with uh, Cardinal Glemp, uh, who accused at a furious speech um, in August 1989 uh, the Jews of controlling the mass media and to disseminate anti polonism uh, a close ally, as Robert recalls, which today not many people might remember, outside of Poland perhaps, uh, a close ally of Lech Walesa and the Solidarność movement was a Henrik Jankowski, um, who was also known for anti-Semitic speeches uh, in his time in the 80s, for example. Um, they introduced, for example, the uh, idea of the Jewish communist conspiracy, which is in Germany, of course, well known among the far right, including a Mr. Hohmann, who was formerly from the Conservative Party, who is now uh, working for the Alternative for Germany. Uh, and Robert Wichtig deals with this Jewish communist um, idea, which is called in Polish, I think, Judeo Comuna, Judeo Communism. Right, <laughs> uh, which has become, according to, to Robert, and I think Robert, Robert might, might perhaps deal with this uh, topic a little bit more, after 1989, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, has become a real big topic, the judeo communism that means the Jews are responsible for communist rules and crimes. Um, then, finally, uh, I would like to emphasize that we have this year alone, because our topic is anti-Semitism in Poland 2018. Um, we have, even in Germany, it was well in the news that uh, the new uh, Polish uh, Prime Minister, Mateusz uh, Morawiecki, uh, said in, in, Pol uh, in Munich at a conference in February this year, um, according uh, to news reports, that there are, quote, Polish, Russian, Ukrainian, and not only German, but also Jewish perpetrators in the Holocaust. This was his response to the current debate about Holocaust remembrance uh, in Poland, uh, and he said that, well, there were many people among the perpetrators uh, saying there might have been Polish, but also Jewish, which is, of course, uh, outrageous, and um, many people in the, in the world, including in the press in Germany, were outraged about this statement. So I think these few remarks about Poland, anti-Semitism, and the connection to the work and life of, of Robert Wistrich um, might be uh, sufficient to introduce uh, Rafa, who, as I said, is a co-founder of an NGO, uh, Never Again, 1996, so he has a long legacy already um, of dealing with uh, neo-Nazism and the history of the Holocaust and the remembrance of the Holocaust in Poland. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing your words. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you very much, uh, Clemens, for, for your invitation. It is really a, an honor and a pleasure to be, to be here uh, in in this beautiful um, uh, synagogue, um, and I, I appreciate your your interest in 
Polish issues on a, on a hot day. Um, 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 I don't want to read all the long text I have, I have with me, with all the quotes uh, that, that, that I collected uh, this year, but I want to give you a, a, a glimpse of what has been happening in Poland uh, uh, recently in connection to those uh, uh, debates uh, you, you mentioned already. But before I do that, uh, I also want to... Uh, uh, to mention Robert Wistrich, whom I only uh, met once, like you, mm. uh, like you said, uh, 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 but it was very appropriate for for for, for you to um, emphasize his um, his Polish Jewish roots, and uh, and I think in a, in a in a way the the history of the Wistrich uh, family is very relevant to those current debates in Poland because the the family in fact um, well left Poland. Twice, uh, you might say, uh, um, um, during the Nazi occupation, when they when they found themselves in the in the Soviet zone and 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 they were uh, deported to the to the Soviet East, um, which um, well ironically uh, saved their lives, which was the case uh, of, of 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 many Polish Jews uh, who, who who survived the war in in, in the Soviet Union. Uh, but they also uh, left Poland for the second time after the war uh, as a result of, um, of anti-Semitism in Poland after 1945. Uh, um, anti-Semitism and anti-Jewish violence, including the pogrom of Kielce uh, uh, that contributed uh, to the wave of uh, emigration of, of, of Jews in Poland post World War II. And those events are very much at the center of those discussions we are um, having in, in, in Poland uh, this year. But I, I have to uh, admit, I researched anti-Semitism uh, in Poland, in the region of Central and Eastern Europe for, well, for more than two decades now. So I kind of knew it existed. It, it, I, I, I would say, it was very difficult to surprise me with <laughs> something in this field. Um, but I admit I was surprised this year. And I have been shocked by the scale of the phenomenon this year, um, also by the speed uh, of, the, uh, of, uh, of the phenomenon uh, that really started on a specific day. Um, and it's not often that we can point to a certain day mm -hmm. uh, and talk about a campaign that starts then. It's more difficult uh, uh, for us to uh, point to a day when the campaign uh, ended, but it definitely started on a, on a specific day, uh, that is the 27th of January this year, which of course is the well-known anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz and the International Holocaust Remembrance uh, uh, day, um, but what happened on that night uh, uh, was the beginning of of this upsurge in uh, in uh, in, in anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic discourse in in Poland in 2018. The Polish Parliament, like you heard, passed a very controversial piece of legislation uh, uh, that uh, uh, strongly restricts uh, freedom of speech uh, with regards to certain historical events. I can actually read it out uh, 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 so that we have the full wording of, of, of the most controversial um, uh, paragraphs of this, of this law. Uh, whoever claims publicly and contrary to the facts that the Polish nation or the Republic of Poland is responsible or co-responsible for Nazi crimes committed by the Third Reich, as specified in Article 6 of the, of the Charter of the International Military Tribunal, um, uh, signed in London on 8th of August 1945, uh, all other felonies that constitute crimes against peace, crimes against humanity or war crimes, or whoever otherwise grossly diminishes the responsibility of the true perpetrators of said crimes shall be liable to a fine or imprisonment for up to three years. The sentence shall be made public. 
and then if the act specified in clause 1 is committed unintentionally, the perpetrator shall be liable to a fine or a restriction of liberty. Um, so it is a very unusual legal formulation. And I'm not a legal expert and I don't want to spend too much time on, on, on the legal aspects of, of, um, of this provision, but let's note one or two things. Um, first of all, there is no chronological framework. So hypothetically, theoretically, if you say anything about crimes against peace, crimes against humanity or war crimes committed by the Polish state or nation mm -hmm. at any point in history, you could be liable for punishment. So if you say Polish King Jan Sobieski committed some crimes during the Polish invasion of Moldova in the 17th century, theoretically, if you take this mm -hmm. provision literally, yeah. you could be in trouble. Um, uh, second uh, thing to note is the introduction of two entities that are protected. It is Polish state, the Republic of Poland, and the Polish nation, mm -hmm. which in the Polish language means something like the Polish people, uh, the, the, the national community, the ethnic community. Uh, so once again, these this is a category that's not very well defined. Yes. So when you talk about a group of Poles who committed a crime, you also enter some difficult legal ground. And finally, what is also rather strange, is, is the uh, aspiration of this legislation to apply globally, even, mm -hmm. a, even to the cases uh, when people commit this so-called crime unintentionally. So if you think you, you are saying something relatively innocent in New Zealand, the Polish state thinks they can uh, convict you of this crime even if you commit it unintentionally, which obviously is very impractical. It, it is very unrealistic to, uh, to, expect, to expect that you know, people in New Zealand would be affected by this legislation. But funnily enough, one of the first cases when the legislation was, was actually... Uh, uh, used uh, uh, in a case that that uh, that reached the, the the Polish judicial system, that was against the publication in Argentine, uh, okay. which led to a very unusual conflict between the Polish and the Argentinian government on the protection of freedom of speech in Argentine, uh, which uh, uh, which is endangered by the Polish legislation. I know all of this sounds rather. Uh, uh, problematic is the diplomatic way to call it. Um, uh, but what I think is, is, is really way more problematic is, is something else. It's not this particular piece of legislation that is, that is, uh, uh, that is the main problem. Um, because this law wouldn't, wouldn't really be applied uh, uh, um, seriously because uh, it, it is formulated in, in, in a way that is so unclear and so impractical. What I would say is a much bigger problem today is the kind of discourse uh, that goes with it. It is the kind of um, 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 uh, sentiment uh, 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 that is accompanying uh, um, this discussion in, in Poland today, um, um, which is often uh, very strongly influenced by anti-Semitic Prejudice by anti-Semitic stereotypes, which, in my opinion, is the truly alarming uh, aspect mm. of the Polish situation. It's not really just the law uh, that is the problem. It is the whole debate around it, which very quickly turned very ugly. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 that happened on 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 the uh, on the Auschwitz anniversary, uh, Auschwitz liberation anniversary, when the Israeli uh, ambassador Anna Azari publicly spoke out against this problematic law and was immediately um, and her, her protest was immediately met uh, by a wave of, um, of anti-Semitic statements across Polish media and politics, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I, I will repeat is probably the, the much bigger problem now. And I will give you some examples um, just to illustrate what we are uh, what we are talking about here. 
Well, already immediately after the, this, 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 this public criticism by the Israeli uh, uh, ambassador, um, uh, the, the, there were first reactions, including uh, a reaction by Rafał Ziemkiewicz, um, who is a, a popular figure in Poland. He is a popular commentator uh, and a writer, uh, a science fiction writer, uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, frequently on on, on Polish uh, television as a com commentator. He wrote the following sentence on his Twitter account. And I should mention he has 150,000 followers on Twitter, so he has a big presence on social media. Uh, and he, he wrote, for many years I have been convincing people that we must support Israel today because of a few greedy kikes, I, f I feel like an idiot. He actually used the word in Poland that is not so easy to translate. Uh, the, the word in, 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 in Polish is uh, um, uh, parch, uh, which is the most offensive anti-Semitic term that you could think of. And he used it in, in, this, in, the, in this comment. Um, now, Polish state television requires its employees not to use any language on social media that they would not use on air. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, he, wa he was not disciplined for this tweet, uh, and uh, well, you might say his career blossomed. A few weeks ago, Jemkiewicz uh, was named uh, in a Tel Aviv University report on antisemitism, and he uh, he, uh, he reacted by saying it was a measure of his professional success. So he's obviously proud of it. But this is just one of many. Uh, dozens if if not hundreds of uh, similar uh, similar comments uh, made in public by um, 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 by representatives of Polish media and, 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 and Polish politics but I want to stress that until not so long ago such discourse such comments um, had been largely limited to the far right fringe mm -hmm. of Polish uh, of Polish politics. What is new about this year is the mainstreaming of, of this discourse and uh, and the presence of um, of such comments not on the fringe, not just on the fringe, uh, uh, um, 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 but in in statements um, on state television. Um, and statements, especially by members of Polish Parliament, including members of the ruling part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more examples. Um, Jacek Żalek is a member of Parliament who is a deputy chairman uh, of the parliamentary faction of the ruling party, German Justice, uh, who several times denied Polish responsibility for the uh, for the pogroms uh, in Kelce and uh, in Yedbabne. In one of the interviews uh, he said about the Kelce pogrom, he said it was a provocation of the communist security services. Uh, uh, in another uh, interview on television he said the Jews in Yedbabne were murdered by Germans, i.e. not by the Polish neighbors. Um, and in a more shocking statement, he also said, if you uh, uh, accuse the Polish community of Yedwabne of murdering their Jewish neighbors, uh, then uh, when you talk about the role of the Jewish police in the Holocaust, you might just as well say that Jews created the Holocaust for themselves. And that's not the kind of statement that normally we would expect from a mainstream mm. politician. Um, uh, Pavel Kukis, I don't know how many of you heard about him. He is actually the leader of the third biggest uh, political group in Polish parliament. And he's an, uh, he's an ex-rock uh, uh, star, uh, he's especially popular with, with, with younger people. Uh, he made the following comments, again, very early in the discussion, so on the 28th of January, so just the day after the intervention by the Israeli ambassador. Um, and um, he strongly alluded uh, to what he thinks is, is a strong link between Jews and communism. Um, 
he says, I don't call the post-war camps in Świętochowice and Jaworzno led by Mr. Morel of Jewish nationality, Jewish concentration camps. So he said, I don't do, and then he actually uh, used this phrase. Um, uh, then he accused, uh, uh, in the same program on, on television, he accused uh, Jews of committing a crime of defamation against the Polish people, equal, in his view, to the crime of the Holocaust itself. Quote, unquote, making Poles responsible for the Holocaust is a moral, ethical Holocaust against the Poles. And again, in, in the same, in the same um, discussion on television, uh, he rather typically um, used his own family history to prove uh, the, case of, the case of Polish innocence and the Jewish lack of gratitude, uh, and of course the link between Jews and communism. Quote, I, unquote, my mother helped Jews in Warsaw. She told me about it. I have many Jewish friends, but that's my favorite <laughs> sentence here. Um, at the same time, I would not call the communist system Jewish, despite the fact all the senior personnel in the security <laughs> service, the NKVD, the judiciary, were people such as Schechter, Michnik, Morel, Światło, Różański, Goldberg, etc. These are all Jewish names. Yeah. So I would not call communism Jewish, but uh, he does just that. <laughs> and then the journalist interrupted, interrupted Cookies and said, but now we have this crisis on the international level. And Cookies responded, I don't have a crisis, sir. Maybe the Jews have a crisis, a moral crisis, yeah. since they accuse the Poles of participation in such yeah. crimes. And it's not, again, a fringe figure, I want to stress. This is the leader of the, of the, of the third political force in, 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 the Polish, in the Polish parliament. There is, another, uh, there is another member of parliament from the same political group. Uh, his name is Marek Jakubiak, who is known as, as a politician uh, from the Cookies uh, um, movement, but he's also known as the producer of beer. Um, he went a little further in making uh, this case case for moral equivalence between the Polish and the Jewish uh, plight during World War II. And he stressed that what he thinks is the, the unfair treatment of Poles by, by international public opinion. And in an interview with a, with a big pro-government uh, website, uh, Jakub, Jakubiak said the following. Um, the Poles were also victims of the Holocaust because we were murdered equally ferociously as the Jews. Uh, um, okay, I will omit some, some sentences here, but um, another quote from Jakubiak. Oh yes, um, 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 according to Jakubiak, the Jews allegedly refused to help the Poles under Soviet occupation. And he says, show me at least one Pole who was saved by a Jew. The Holocaust against Poles was as big as the one against the Jews. And what about the Jewish perpetrators? Um, Again, another, another uh, uh, similar quote uh, by a member of parliament, this time not from the Cookies Movement, but from Law and Justice, the, the ruling party. Ireneusz Zyska, a member of parliament, said on state tele television, let us remember there was also a Holocaust against the Polish people. The Jews and Israel have no monopoly on the word Holocaust. Okay, so what we have here is this very typical discourse uh, that, that, that has been uh, um, uh, described as the competition of victimhood. And of course there is no doubt that the, the ethnic Polish uh, population suffered a lot during the Nazi occupation. Um, it would be very uh, silly to question that. Uh, but it is also very clear um, the ethnic Polish population uh, had a different um, situation than the Jews, who were mm -hmm. obviously uh, um, 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 uh, um, experiencing direct physical extermination. Um, but, the, but the competition of victimhood um, is 
very often linked with the stereotype of Jewish participation in, in communist crimes against Poland. And again, some, some, some more quotes illustrating that. Um, Senator Jan Jaren uh, is, is actually uh, an important member of law and, ju and justice. He is a historian, he's a professor of history who is very instrumental in um, uh, what is described uh, history policy of, 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 the, of, um, of the ruling party in Poland now. And I just have uh, one sentence uh, from a website summarizing his interview on Polish state radio um, in the first days of February 2018. Professor Jarin discussed the participation of Jews in the mass killings of Poles in the Eastern Territories and the assistance provided by Jews in the occupation of Poland by the Red Army. Um, okay, more quotes like that, uh, but I think, well, this is probably the most radical one in, 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 in of a similar type. It is another member of Parliament for Law and Justice, Kristina Pawłowicz. She doesn't hold any other office uh, apart from being an MP, but she's very well known in Poland and especially known for her, uh, for her radical statements. She wrote on her, uh, on her Facebook page, um, the Holocaust against the Poles continued after World War II. Israel, are the Jews guilty of crimes against the Poles? And then she gave a list of Stalinist security officials uh, with Jewish names. Um, again, I'm not talking about a member of a, of a small far-right party. I'm talking about a member of the, of the, ruling, uh, of the ruling party. Uh, mm, so I, I, I mentioned some, uh, some you know, highly controversial statements by politicians. I have now some controversial statements by intellectuals. Uh, one of one of whom um, is, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is a professor of history uh, whose name is Bogdan Musiał. He actually worked in Germany for a few years. I don't know whether he is uh, known to, 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 to anybody in, 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 in this group. But now he is in Poland. Uh, um, he is a newly appointed member of the Council of the Museum of World War II in Gdańsk which is a new interesting museum uh, um, but they just changed the, the uh, um, um, members of the council. He is also an advisor to the chairman of the National Memory Institute which is an influential um, institution of the Polish state and what he had to say on state television I would say goes beyond uh, uh, conflicting interpretations of history that we can call the competition of, uh, of victimhood. Um, he, he goes beyond that and he attacks uh, uh, the significance of the Holocaust in, in contemporary Jewish identity. Um, so he says, Holocaust is a supplementary religion for Judaism. And he says, the Israeli reaction to the Polish legislation is a result of recognizing the memory of the Holocaust as a form of religion where emotions play the crucial role at the expense of facts. At the same time, uh, Musiał um, stresses the positive role played by the Polish Catholics and by the Polish Church, and you alluded to some controversies around uh, the role of the, of the Catholic Church in this whole story. Musiał says, trying to get the Church into the Holocaust is a diversion of attention from the left-wing ideas which created the foundations for national socialism. Um, one more, uh, one more intellectual who has also played a, a political role is Professor Andrzej Zybertowicz. He is a, a sociologist um, and an advisor to the president of Poland, and he often represents the, uh, the, the president of Poland in mainstream media discussions. And he gave a very long interview 
to uh, mm, to a newspaper called Polska The Times, which is the Polish edition of the of the British newspaper The Times. Um, he said some things that were truly surprising. Um, for example, anti-Polonism in Israel results from the feeling of shame at the passivity of the, of the Jews during the Holocaust. It's a form of compensation. Then he, uh, then he discussed the politics of the Middle East and he said, the brutal treatment of the Palestinians and the Hezbollah is also a form of the compensation. Earlier, the Jews experienced the trauma of humiliation, and now, perhaps in line with their chutzpah tradition, they compensated. Okay, so he managed to be offensive mm. on several levels in one in one sentence. Uh, he uh, managed to combine a negative assessment of what he thinks was Jewish cowardice during the Holocaust, a condemnation of Israel's policies in the Middle East and a negative reference to Jewish culture in general, the chutzpah tradition. Um, he repeated uh, uh, um, uh, uh, those allegations several times throughout the interview. So he said, many Jews engaged in denunciation, collaboration during the war. I think Israel has still not worked it through. I wonder if this political and symbolic attack of Israel on Poland and Poles is not, apart from all else, a smoke screen against remembering how they behaved in the face of the Holocaust. They were passive, they collaborated, and the Jewish elites from the east coast of the USA, having learned from the Poles about what was going on in the concentration camps, behaved passively. But as a Pole, I don't agree for Israel to conduct its reckoning with history at the expense of our country. And then, in conclusion, um, Zybertowicz uh, uh, accuses Israel of unfairly benefiting from the Holocaust and alluding, uh, and he alludes to the Polish-Jewish competition of victimhood again, and he says, in this dispute, one can see clearly Israel is fighting to keep the monopoly on the Holocaust. The religion of the Holocaust has become a symbolic shield for that country, which is used by Israel to create for itself a special position in many places in the world. A shield which is meant to protect Israel against any criticism. And now Israel is afraid that Poland will destroy its monopoly on the Holocaust. Um, well, not surprisingly, this interview actually made international headlines mm -hmm. because it was not a French figure, it was a key advisor to the Polish president. Uh, as a result, the president's office um, uh, declared uh, that uh, these comments were not made on behalf of the president himself. Okay? Uh, but the author of those comments was not publicly reprimanded by the president. Uh, and a few days after this interview, I had a chance to discuss it with Mr. Zybertowicz himself at, mm -hmm. uh, at a public uh, discussion at, uh, at our university in Warsaw, Collegium Civitas. And well, I thought we were giving him a chance to explain himself or apologize for those comments. And I, I said, well, Professor Zybertowicz, I thought your comments in that interview were astonishing. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say about it? And actually, he more or less repeated everything he had to say mm -hmm. in in in, the, in that interview. Um, but uh, to be sure, he he was not alone uh, in attributing the crime of collaboration with the Nazis, uh, the guilt of collaboration with the Nazis, to the Jews themselves. In fact, such arguments became commonplace in in, in Polish media this year. One example is a well-known right-wing um, commentator, analyst, Jerzy Targalski, who has a weekly show on television. And in one of those weekly shows uh, in February, he said, I quote, among the Jews, it was the elite who collaborated with the Germans. It was the Judenrat, the Jewish police, 
So our Polish defense must rely on reminding of the Jewish accounts of Jewish collaboration um, in the Holocaust, then the Jewish exclusivity will end. Okay. Uh, coming back to coming back to what politicians had to say, uh, including uh, high-ranking politicians. Uh, one such example is Beata Mazurek, who is not just a member of parliament, but she, uh, she also has a double function as a deputy speaker of Polish parliament, and she is the official spokesperson for the ruling party. So it, she is quite an important voice in Polish politics. Again, on social media, on Twitter, she wrote, quoting from a Catholic priest who said on state television, uh, but she quoted it, uh, 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 she quoted this sentence without any comment by herself, so with approval, you might think. Mm -hmm. um, the quote was, uh, what the Israeli ambassador has done makes it difficult for me to look at Jews with friendship and sympathy. Uh, this declaration was posted on the night of, uh, of the 2nd of February and it was not, it was not deleted. Uh, again, another uh, member of Parliament for Law and Justice, Ivona Arendt, uh, participated in a, in a discussion on television and said, if there is now a wave of anti-Semitism or a different perspective on the Jews, then one must say it will be the fault of the Jews themselves. Uh, so both these comments um, uh, uh, blame the Jews for this current new wave of anti-Semitism, which I thought was another interesting uh, element of the uh, um, of the discourse. Okay, um, I will omit some other comments. Oh yes, you mentioned Radio Maria. Let's let's have one from them. Uh, it is an interview with um, Professor Mieczysław Ryba from the Catholic University of Lublin, who is also an advisor to the Polish president, um, who gave a long interview published in the daily newspaper of Radio Maria, um, Nasz Dziennik, our daily, and he talked about the what he thinks is disproportionate Jewish influence in international affairs in connection with, 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 with the Polish discussion. Uh, so he said, this is a dispute about our national identity. That's why we must not give in. All this has to be told to the world, but it takes a lot of effort and financial resources as well as good planning. And then the journalist taking the interview commented, it's not simple because the Jewish circles are strongly privileged in the world. And Professor Riba answers, of course, today the Jewish arguments in the field of diplomacy better reach the world's opinion. Okay, um, so the, the talk of the disproportionate uh, Jewish influence um, uh, often uh, includes uh, the supposed danger uh, coming from the Jewish lobby in the United States. And that, uh, that was stressed by, um, by the Polish politician, uh, whose name is Richard Czarnecki, who at that time was the vice president of the European Parliament. So again, not exactly a marginal figure, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the vice president of the European Parliament said on Polish uh, state television, the circles of American Jews have often been even more aggressive than the Jewish circles in Israel. But I am a Polish politician and I have Polish duties. And that was a very interesting code that he used that is uh, understandable to anybody who knows something about the tradition of Polish uh, 
ethno-nationalism uh, because it is a hidden quote from Roman Dmowski. Roman Dmowski was the founding father of modern antisemitism in Poland and Roman Dmowski gave us the famous motto I am Polish and I have Polish duties. That is a nationalist motto that is used by the far right for um, uh, for the last century. Mm -hmm. um, and of course when Richard Czarnecki said in connection with the, uh, with, with the danger of, uh, of, of the American Jews, from the American Jews, he said, but I am a Polish politician and I have Polish duties. He was obviously alluding to this, uh, 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 to this old motto. Um, okay, one important part of this um, explosion of anti-Semitic discourse is the um, is the assumption or the allegation uh, of the Jewish financial motivation in protesting against the Polish legislation. Uh, so according to very widespread uh, um, type of uh, discourse, uh, widespread in Polish media and politics, the Jewish opposition to, to, to this legislation on history was largely or mostly motivated by the Jewish desire for financial gains at the expense of Poland. And uh, well, one headline uh, in, 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 a, in a, one of the biggest Polish tabloid newspapers, Super Express, sums it up. The headline was, what the Jews want from Poland, forests, factories, houses, worth even one billion. Uh, that was on the 3rd of February. Um, I have many quotes with um, with uh, with this kind of um, uh, uh, suspicion, but for a change, I can read one quote which is less crude, which is more subtle, you might mm -hmm. say, but mm -hmm. it has a very similar uh, um, um, uh, kind of content. It's from a Polish deputy minister of justice, who didn't make any explicit uh, allegation, but. Um, um, but he said something interesting. Um, um, so the headline of the, of the interview was with his quote, we cannot call the Israeli embassy before passing each piece of legislation and ask if they kindly agree to it. And the interview itself, he, he says, uh, I quote, asked if the reprivatization issue is not the main source of the problem we are facing today. Um, uh, he says there are many commentators also abroad who point to the fact that these issues can be linked. It is about big money, but it is easier to attack Poland from an ethical position than from a financial position because it is easier to justify. So, so this is a little bit unclear, but but the, but the. Um, but the bottom line of, of what he is saying is actually quite similar to, to, to the more crude kind of argumentation. Um, there is another politician who, who, who said it much more clearly, and this is a member of the Senate from Law and Justice, Jerzy Czerwiński, in an interview on state radio on the 5th of February. Uh, he said, Another issue is the reaction of the Jewish state, both the Jewish state Israel and the political circles inside Israel. Maybe you can call it a conspiracy theory, but I think this nervous reaction uh, we heard, uh, I think this reaction results from a hidden agenda. After all, we know the Jewish circles, including American, but mostly the state of Israel, are trying to get restitution of property or at least compensation. Uh, and I have many more quotes with very similar contents that I am not going to read out. Um, I have one from, from a Catholic priest uh, uh, who commented on, on that on Polish state television. I, I think I mentioned his name already, um, uh, Father Henryk Zieliński. Uh, he said on Polish television, we have to link it all to Law 447. Law 447 is a 
U.S. Congress um, legislative initiative on Holocaust survivors' property. Um, and then, all of a sudden, in the next sentence, this, this priest says, and now the question of the biography of George Soros, what he did as a Jew during the war, can't it be called Schmalzownik? Schmalzownik is an offensive term in Polish uh, describing a Nazi collaborator. So I think sometimes we, we can see here a um, rather surprising um, juxtaposition of arguments uh, that I think um, um, reflects um, um, something from the subconscious uh, nature and the structure of, of this discourse with seemingly unrelated arguments uh, uh, being, uh, being reproduced uh, uh, next, uh, next to each other. And in the, in the very same uh, discussion, the same conversation on, on television, another participant, um, a well-known journalist, responded to this by saying the Israel lobby may try to block funding for US soldiers stationing in Poland. This pressure is extremely brutal, so we must stay firm. And the third participant of this discussion summed it all up in a, in a, in a, in a peculiar way, and he said, for Poland, it is a matter of survival in the year of the um, 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 100 years of Polish independence, and actually Israel's policy is anti-Semitic in the long term. Uh, uh, so this is, this is the kind of argument that uh, makes you uh, powerless if you try to analyze it, because we have a real hodgepodge of unrelated uh, mm. phrases, you might say, okay. in, in, in the course of one conversation, Absolutely. in the course of several, mm. uh, several minutes on, on this broadcast. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I am uh, approaching the conclusion here, but I already mentioned uh, the, the name of this commentator in the very beginning, Rafał Ziemkiewicz. He was the Polish uh, television journalist and science fiction writer who uh, uh, used this uh, extreme anti-Semitic term on social media on the first day of the controversy. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he has been very much involved in the controversy ever since, uh, but I think there is one point that he made uh, that gives an extra level uh, to the understanding of, um, of, uh, of this discourse. Um, so, yes, he also said on television it is exclusively about the forthcoming reprivatization law, so again uh, alluding to uh, um, um, uh, financial interests and material interests of the of the so-called Jewish lobby, but he also used this opportunity to attack the, 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 the opponents of, um, of the government policy and opponents of this piece of legislation in particular as traitors to the country. Uh, and he said about opposition, the political opposition, one can have different views about the law, about the authorities, but in moments like this, when Poland is a target of attacks from all sides, the opposition should reflect. Uh, all that bunch uh, only assist Israel. Together with media, they constitute, oh, he talks about independent media, uh, uh, they constitute the fifth column. If somebody can talk uh, about Polish extermination camps, we can counter it with the Jewish death camps, and then the last sentence uh, uh, sums it up. The political scene has been divided into Polish and anti-Polish. Okay? So he is uh, uh, clearly and very conveniently labeling the, the government's detractors as anti-Polish, which I think mm -hmm. is a very important element of the, of the discursive strategy. Um, and that really reminds us of something that we know from, um, uh, from Polish history. Well, I'm not old enough to remember it myself, but I think I read enough about it, and I also mm -hmm. talked with people who remember the anti-Semitic campaign unleashed by the Polish communist authorities in 1968. Um, and th there are uh, elements of the contemporary discourse that strongly remind us uh, 
of the of the rhetoric used in 1968. And I will give you one example uh, from this year from Polish state radio that easily could have come from 1968. Uh, it is a commentator on, on Polish state radio who said that Poles who support the Israeli uh, point of view in, in, in the current controversy, uh, they should uh, give up their Polish citizenship. And then he says, I quote, if somebody acts as a spokesman for Israeli interests, maybe they should think about giving up their Polish citizenship and accepting Israeli citizenship. And this comment was stressed on the radio station's official Twitter account. This is the uh, state radio channel. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about the Jewish community in Poland today as the fifth column uh, um, is something that we didn't hear about for many years. Mm -hmm. And we hear, uh, we hear it again. And that includes, um, for example, the, the demonstration of the openly anti-Semitic extremist uh, groups uh, that happened in front of the Polish president's uh, palace in Warsaw on the 5th of February. And uh, that demonstration uh, was about that. Uh, um, uh, the main message of the demonstration was was calling the Jewish community in Poland uh, the fifth and the fifth column. So I, I intentionally um, uh, wanted to give you all those all those quotes. I didn't use all the different quotes I had with me here, but I really wanted to give you many mm -hmm. uh, uh, because I wanted to illustrate the scale of the phenomenon, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the sheer. Uh, scale, the, 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 the sheer size, the, the sheer number of those quotes, and mm -hmm. this is just a, a selection of, out of many available, uh, that I think shows us that something really special happened in Poland this year, and it didn't happen somewhere you know, very far, it, 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 it happened one or two hours drive from here, in the, in the, in, 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 in the middle of Europe, in the 21st century, I think it largely uh, went underreported internationally, which possibly also tells us something about the uh, evolving or moving threshold of sensitivity to antisemitism mm -hmm. in Europe as a as a whole. Um, uh, uh, but I think even if uh, this problematic piece of legislation will be amended and maybe soon forgotten in Poland, then I think the repercussions of this recent anti-Semitic frenzy that I think few people could predict, uh, they will remain to be seen for many more months, maybe years, and maybe maybe mm -hmm. decades. And I know it's not a very optimistic point on which to <laughs> on which to on which to finish. Uh, but I also want to uh, to mention just just, just briefly. Of course, not everybody suddenly became anti-Semitic in Poland. Mm -hmm. There are also alternative uh, uh, um, uh, points of view and, and alternative voices which are uh, exp expressed in, 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 in Polish media and, and, and in Polish politics. Um, um, but, the, um, but the explosion of the anti-Semitic sentiment in Poland this year has been very, very real, and I think it would be wrong to uh, um, uh, to deny that it is a challenge that mm. is that is still that is still with us on a scale that I personally personally didn't think I would live to experience in my in my life. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rafael. Uh, that was a very impressive and important talk. Uh, I was always looking at this mm. cover of one of the... I mean, I cannot uh, think how, how important is this journal, for example. Mm -hmm. If you show this cover, I mean, obviously this means attack on Poland by the Jews. This looks like nasty. I mean, is this a neo-Nazi magazine or...? <laughs> no, well, thank you for uh, <laughs> reminding me of, of this little connection, collection yeah. I, I, I brought yeah. with me just, 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 just to illustrate what uh, I'm talking about. Uh, in more visual terms, uh, no, these are right-wing magazines from Poland, weekly magazines. Uh, 
uh, some of them are actually uh, significant magazines. So this one, for example, is one of the biggest um, uh, weekly magazines in, in, in Poland. Okay. I don't remember precisely how many copies they sell, but it's one of the biggest uh -huh. uh, weeklies uh, so like weeklies in, in, Germany? in Poland. Well, I think it is probably closer to the center of power uh, <laughs> in, the, in the sense of the connections with the, with the, with the current ruling elite. Okay. And well, yes, the, 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 the headline here is easy to, um, uh, to translate. It, is, it says, attack on Poland. And of course, we have the Star of David in the middle of the perceived attack of Poland. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are more of those covers here. Mm -hmm. Well, this one is, is from a more radical nationalist magazine, but the, the headline is, 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 is kind of um, uh, interesting. Uh, it is asking or, or, or uh, proclaiming uh, for what the Jews should apologize to the Polish people. Uh -huh. uh, the Jews should apologize. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, this is another right-wing magazine. I don't know if you can see uh, this man's face here. This is Rafał Ziemkiewicz, um, the, 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 the man I mentioned uh, uh, twice. And here they are talking about Polish-Israeli war. And of course, this is the Prime Minister of Poland. This is Netanyahu. So the whole conflict is, uh, is framed in terms of war. Um, this is, this is Donald Trump, and uh, they are warning against the Holocaust industry attacking Poland. And they talk about this uh, law in uh, US Congress, Law 447, which they believe is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a part of the Jewish-American conspiracy against Poland. Okay, this is another uh, one of uh, uh, what is mm -hmm. Well, you see, uh, nobody knows exactly. Um, um, it is, well, basically what, what it is, it was passed by the US Congress recently. It is a source of conspiracy theories, but what, what, what this American piece of legislation actually says is simply uh, uh, calling the State Department to collect information on legislation in other countries uh, dealing with uh, restitution of property of Holocaust survivors, which is not a very concrete uh, uh, piece of legislation, but that, that inspires a lot of conspiracy theories around the issue of restitution of property, uh, certainly in Poland. Uh, it's very much um, part of this current discourse of uh, of, of warning against uh, against against the Jewish conspiracy. Um, okay, this is from last week. In case you thought it stopped, it, it's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, asking how strong is the Jewish lobby? Can the Polish government deal deal with it? Um, uh, so. Uh, so these are all far right monthly or weekly magazines. Well, you see, the, 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 it's, it's a tricky question to answer because uh, one of the one of the big problems in the in 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 the case of Polish politics, but also in the case of Polish uh, political um, um, publications, it's not so easy to divide between the far right and the mainstream right. Mm. Uh, so the, there is a blurring of divisions, and especially this year, definitely um, some of the things that are said by mainstream political figures or mainstream political commentators or journalists, mm. uh, until this year that was more or less unthinkable. Uh, uh, which is not to say anti-Semitism didn't exist, but it was relatively rarely uh, present uh, on, on, on that scale in, in, in the political uh, mainstream. It was an, ex an exception, uh, not mm -hmm. the rule. Uh, this year, everything turned upside down. Um, but once again, I would say this is, this, is, this is a weekly magazine that is very close to the Polish government today. And uh, it's one of the biggest, the, one of the best selling political weeklies okay. in Poland too. So is this one. Uh, but what they, what, what they are saying until until recently would have been said by 
by far right publications like this one. I see. Now okay. there is not much of a difference between between them, and they uh, they even look very so similar. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have, I have one more cover to show, uh, uh, which is an anti-fascist cover, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is our um, uh, anti-racist magazine Never Again. Just, just to indicate uh, there are alternative, uh, alternative yeah, uh, 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 perspectives in, 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 in Polish public um, uh, um, um, debates too, but I also have to admit very Honestly, uh, we are very much on the defensive in those discussions in Poland today. You know, we are the ones who are called the traitors uh, to the nation, mm -hmm. um, and I think you know, in in, in, in some ways, uh, uh, in some ways, we are in a minority position today. If you if you look at the uh, at the scale of um, um, of this kind of discourse, uh, it may change in the next months and I hope it will change but I think also in some ways what has been said by all those politicians and all those publications it will be very difficult to undo mm. if not impossible so what has been said mm. will be very difficult to um, uh, uh, to uh, to withdraw uh, and I think this is one of the most serious aspects of the of the Polish uh, situation today those things will be with us yeah. even if they are not repeated all the time um, it will be very difficult to, to forget all, of all, course all yeah. so any questions or remarks uh, thank you so much for your patience uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know it was a lot of uh, 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 you know yeah. unpleasant material I, I shared with you but I really wanted you to to feel what is the kind of uh, sure. discourses mm. that, that that we have been de dealing with Yes, thank you very much for this very interesting lecture and I wanted to know, um, lastly you mentioned that you think there will be a, a more powerful reaction concerning the public opinion mm -hmm. um, and um, why do you think that? Uh, are there signs, is there a opposition against all these quotes, is there a public debate that goes through the media also? Can say something about this. Mm -hmm. The other side of Poland, yes. Okay, I, I know it's a, it's a, it's a good point. Uh, thank you, thank you for this. Um, I think there are many people uh, who who share my perspective. For example, you know, people who are absolutely shocked and terrified by this explosion. Um, but I also have to admit, uh, uh, those voices are not heard as loudly as. Um, these voices uh, for several reasons um, um, one of those reasons being it is not difficult uh, well wrong uh, it is difficult uh, to be um, uh, uh, to be uh, um, perceived or portrayed as unpatriotic and with this kind of campaign a massive campaign that calls you know all, all the opposition un, unpatriotic, anti-Polish, etc. It is slightly more difficult to um, to object or to protest against this. Uh, uh, you still find uh, voices of protest uh, on independent media, private media, uh, but you very rarely find any uh, critical voices on state-controlled media. Okay. And I should probably m make it clear, uh, as so often in, in history, this is not just about the Jews. Okay, all, 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 all those issues, they are very much related with the more general crisis of uh, liberal and democratic values in, in Poland and, and not only in Poland. And... Um, one of the um, aspects of the crisis of, of, uh, of, uh, of democracy in Poland is the state of the government-controlled media that are uh, uh, very one-sided, that are um, uh, turned completely into a tool of the ruling party. So on state media, all you get is... is, 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 is uh, 
is the propaganda of the ruling party, and you don't really hear uh, uh, many alternative voices. Well, thanks God, we still have some independent media, so it's not completely uh, uh, um, a one-sided picture. Uh, but still, uh, you know, quite a lot of people get mm -hmm. their news and their uh, and their information about um, about society from the from the state television and radio. Mm -hmm. I see. There was mm -hmm. a question from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How do you explain this explosion, as you call it, just that it happened this year or at mm -hmm. that moment when you this date? Yeah. yeah. That would be well, so may, may can I ask my question is the same thing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Do you feel, uh, do you think that uh, um, my idea was uh, perhaps the uh, government has a fear that it is now 50 years, this 68 date, mm -hmm. this anniversary? Do, do you think it has any connection? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why, why this year? Um, mm -hmm. Well, you might say it is just coincidence, uh, but a lot of the analogies are striking. Well, actually, the main, the main anniversary celebrations happened in March, because the peak of this campaign in 1968 was in March. Uh, the 8th of March was the day when a big student demonstration was crushed by, by the police. It was a de the democratic student's demonstration, and the, the government propaganda used anti-Semitism a lot against the democratic movement in Poland then. Uh, so, Ironically, the anniversary was just a few weeks after this, this, this uh, 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 terrible explosion of anti-Semitism uh, began. Now, <laughs> whether or not there was more than coincidence is very difficult to, uh, 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 to say. But why this year? I am not sure I understand it, and uh, actually you probably sensed from what I had to say here, I am in a way still just trying to process and understand what actually happened, because all this is so new, that is just from the last couple of well, months and weeks in fact. So this material is still very fresh, mm -hmm. and I think you know it it, it, it. it will take much more analysis, and uh, it will probably you know provide. Uh, Many scholars with a lot of material to uh, to, to, to to analyze for years, uh, just like the events of 1968 uh, are still analyzed today. But I think a very important part of the analysis uh, that I'm not so sure about is how much of all this is spontaneous and how much is actually planned and organized. And I think probably there are elements of both, as usually mm -hmm. in, in, in such cases. Obviously, there must have been some level of prejudice and stereotypes in Polish culture uh, that was ready-made, uh, uh, but you had to activate it. And I, and I think the, uh, um, uh, uh, that largely or partly happened uh, as a result of political decisions, uh, as a result of political decisions uh, on the level of the ruling party, including the highest levels of, uh, of, of the ruling party. But there, it was probably, I think, a combination of spontaneity and cynical uh, decisions uh, on, on, on the part of the, of the politicians. Um, I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. it's part of the constitutional crisis you have in Poland, actually, mm -hmm. with these new judges which have been elected in a different way. So I think the anti-democratic uh, way of the of the police and justice party is obviously part of the now more anti-Semitic uh, campaign. So uh, they are fueling one another, I think. Well, I, 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 I would agree with you in the sense that the crisis of the democratic values in Polish society, uh, one of the... One of the expressions of this crisis, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, is is, is for anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. uh, but but what we are also dealing with is a more general rise in xenophobia and nationalism. And uh, uh, since the change in the in the political climate in the year 2015, we have seen 
uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, you know, ha hate speech uh, uh, in Polish politics and media, but uh, most of that hate speech was actually directed against um, refugees and Muslims, uh, despite the fact that you know there are hardly any refugees in Poland, and and also the Muslim community is very small, just like the Jewish community. So you might say, how uh, many uh, refugees do we have? Well, uh, I don't know the official figure, but Poland didn't accept a single refugee from the European quota system. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this campaign is 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 targeting a non-existing group, basically. <laughs> and the, the Muslim community is is also very small. It's about the same size as the Jewish community. So it's you know maybe ten, twenty thousand people. Uh, uh, so you you might say you know anti-Semitism without Jews has been a, a phrase that has been used. Uh, in the, in the context of Poland for some decades already, Islamophobia without Muslims is is is, is more recent. Um, but I think some uh, some people went a little bit too far when when looking at it. And even just last year, uh, you could hear it from time to time uh, when when commentators said antisemitism in Poland was uh, replaced uh, with Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, well, this is probably going too far. Mm. And well, now you see, it okay. wasn't really uh, true at all. Uh, yeah. So I would say antisemitism in Poland was supplemented with Islamophobia, and that is true. Uh, but it didn't, it didn't disappear. On the contrary, it reappeared in a, in a, well, in a, spectacular, in a spectacular way. But still, I, coming back to your question, I, I, I really struggle with the answer because I don't know why, why now, why, in, why on the 27th of January of this year it, it started. And I don't want to go too deep into a conspiracy theory myself, uh, but, but clearly some decisions were made yes, at several junctures in this, in this story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to, uh, a question concerning George Soros. The show Soros, mm -hmm. obviously, today is well known because many anti-Semitic conspiracy theories from Hungary, mm -hmm. from from the Conservative Party, from the CSU and Horst Seehofer in Bavaria, and the far right in Germany, uh, they accuse him of being responsible for financing mm -hmm. NGOs to bringing refugees to Europe and to destabilize uh, the wonderful Hungarian nation and other nations. But I think Soros has been in Poland mm -hmm. a figure, an enemy figure, long before. Because Robert mm -hmm. Bristol already mentions mm -hmm. Soros in 2010, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. at that time, and even before in the 90s perhaps, or in the early 2000s, Soros already was accused by Radio Maria of being anti-Polish. And uh, can you perhaps explain? Mm -hmm. So it was interesting that when Soros in Poland maybe played a longer role of, as a typical anti-Semitic stereotype or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you are right. Uh, I think it's in the Polish case it probably started earlier, but the intensity of the anti-Soros campaign mm -hmm. is, is, is less uh, profound. And I, I was actually in, in Budapest in the summer of last year when those posters were uh, 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 visible all over the city, and that 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 was really quite uh, quite quite special. We didn't have that in, in Poland yet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, uh, I think I, I I used one quote that that uh, targeted Soros, but there are things uh, uh, that have been said about him this year. Uh, there are more 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 examples of that. Uh, so I think if the if the ruling party decides to attack civil society in a in a similar uh, way to what Orban did, mm -hmm. uh, I am sure uh, so Soros think, will be more central as a as a as an enemy as an enemy figure again. I think as mm -hmm. but Robert mentioned in the call of Soros that Soros was co-responsible for choose. Jewish mm -hmm. crimes against Jews during the Holocaust. This is what, what mm -hmm. the campaign was, as far as I understood what Robert mentioned about mm -hmm. Soros, which uh, of course corresponds with many of the examples you say, mm -hmm. that obviously in Poland many people in the mainstream, not only in the far right, accuse Jews of being responsible for crimes against the Holocaust, against the Poles, for example, mm -hmm. or Jews are co-responsible for the crimes against the Jews. So, any more questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you in danger? 
Oh, <laughs> well, you see, I, 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 I try not to panic, <laughs> but uh, on, on, I, I would say on a psychological level, all of this was quite difficult to take. And uh, uh, because basically it, it, it continued, especially on state television, without uh, without breaks. So you, you 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 could wake up in the morning, switch on the television, and they would be talking about Jews, and and they wouldn't stop. And that was frustrating. Uh, uh, so um, I would say it's a psychological danger if you have to listen to it all all, all the time. And I you know I tried to document it and take notes with, with, with many of, 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 of those quotes. Um, but I have, a, I have a personal story in connection with the uh, Global Forum on Antisemitism in Jerusalem in, 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 in March this year. So I had a, a short presentation. Uh, I was asked to do it at the last, at the last minute um, uh, w w with some of this information from, from this year uh, uh, in Poland. And as it turned out, uh, uh, one of the members of the audience uh, was the new uh, secretary to the Polish Prime Minister. And he really didn't like what I had to say. And he started writing about it on Twitter. So he didn't actually uh, try to debate something, but he, he took to Twitter to say, oh, it's a scandal. Pankowski, who is a citizen of Poland, is attacking his own country and oh, things God. like that. Well, not surprisingly, that was taken up by people uh, from the far right who, 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 um, who made it into a kind of campaign targeting me personally, which was not a, a very pleasant thing. But, you know, nothing physical happened to me, so I couldn't really... Uh, couldn't really complain more, uh, 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 but unusually for me, I became the object of of, the, of, of this campaign, and our NGO became uh, sort of center of attention uh, for the nationalists. And uh, in the end, the foreign ministry of Israel uh, had a, had a statement saying it is unacceptable for a Polish government official to attack a speaker who participated in, 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 in the forum uh, in, in Jerusalem. So, so in, in short, yes, we are attacked uh, from this sort of nationalist uh, uh, perspective. Um, but in a way, if you do this kind of anti-racist work, you are often used to that. Uh, yeah. But what was special about this case was that it, was, it didn't come from the far right. It came from an official, okay, so uh, which yeah. is a subtle difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean, as long as Poland is part of the European Union, you can freely move to other countries like Germany. <laughs> so you are welcome, just in case. It's, it's um, no. Thank you, I'll write it down. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, any more and, questions? Um, yeah, question to this again. Um, do some of the far right people saying that you are a Jew? Is this starting that uh, people who are protesting <laughs> against such a thing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yes, of course. Of, you know, that's uh, that's uh, that, that's something that's quite normal uh, uh, in 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 our in our situation. But let let me tell you something else that was a funny funny um, picture from last year. Uh, uh, again, Soros comes back. Uh, so the, the the far right had a demonstration in front of the uh, uh, office of the European Commission in Warsaw. Uh, against what they consider to be foreign interference in, in Polish affairs mm -hmm. on issues such as courts, uh, mm -hmm. etc. And it was, I think, a group of maybe three, four hundred demonstrators and they had uh, posters with um, um, faces of, uh, of, of people they didn't like. Uh, so they had Angela Merkel, her face crossed out. Uh -huh. uh, they had uh, Hans Timmermans, who is the uh, uh, deputy uh, head of the European Commission, who uh -huh. deals with Poland, uh, crossed out. Uh, they had uh, Soros, of course, uh -huh. uh, crossed out. They had Donald Tusk, uh, uh -huh. who they consider to be a traitor of the Polish nation. 
Um, and they had the logo of Never Again Association, also, also crossed out, which was a big compliment and, of course, a um, complete overstatement of our global influence in the league with Soros and Angela Merkel. Uh, but um, yeah, it was interesting to see that. Uh, it was interesting to see that. Yeah, indicating the importance of your work, obviously. In a strange kind of way, yes. In a strange kind of way, yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions... Um, uh, yes, I, I do have a question. It's <laughs> so interesting. Okay. I have uh, mm -hmm. one, two hours uh, longer to your interesting uh, quotes, etc. Um, but I wonder, um, again, um, is there a protest from the academi academia, from mm -hmm. historians, perhaps, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the history of, of Jan Kors, uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. very famous, we know about it mm -hmm. here, but uh, yeah, is there more, is there a supportive uh, thing, is there an yeah, organizing of protest um, against this mm -hmm. history, special history thing? Of course, of course, there are there are several things that that, that uh, might be mentioned here. Well, what what I think I didn't uh, say is that in this problematic law, there is actually a clause that makes an exception. So actually, it's okay to offend the Polish nation if you are an academic or an artist. Then, then you ha then, then you are free to do what you want. Uh, uh, but then again, it is very. Uh, um, Unclear. How do you define academic activity or artistic activity? Okay, so one thing they they, they often say, say about Jan Gross, uh, who is of course a, you know a big elephant in the room here. Uh, they say, oh, Jan Gross is not really a historian. Oh, mm. he's you know he's, he may be a professor of history at Stanford University, uh, but you know for the Polish far right, he's not really a historian. So as at several um, stages during the, uh, the process of passing of this law, it was stated uh, by MPs and also by uh, Deputy Minister of Justice, Jan Gross could be uh, liable under this law, despite right. being a professor mm -hmm. at Stanford. Uh, so it's, it's all a bit unclear on, 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 uh, on, on that front. Uh, uh, huh, uh, but, you know, history is actually, uh, including academic history, is, is actually one of the main sort of battlefields uh, in Polish politics today. And there are several examples of that, including both uh, the sort of nationalist campaign from the from the authorities, but also campaigns of solidarity with academics who are who are attacked. Um, one example is is the institution I mentioned, but I didn't really go into detail. Uh, the Museum of World War II in Gdańsk. Uh, that I would I would recommend uh, 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 you to visit if you have a chance before it is. Um, it is ruined. Uh, now the, go the government took over and they are changing the exhibition step by step to make it more patriotic. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually a good museum uh, that was, uh, that was uh, created uh, by Paweł Machcewicz, who is a brilliant historian and he gave um, uh, about 10 years of his life to, to the creation of this institution. Mm -hmm. um, and he was removed uh, after a lot of discussion and conflict. Um, and now strange things are happening to this museum. Um, but one of many examples I could mention is that um, um, as one of the guides they employed a local leader of ONR, which is a fascist group, National Radical Camp. So he actually works at the museum as a guide. And there is one room in the museum that is devoted to Italian fascist posters. So he actually took a selfie uh, in that room and, and, and published it on his Facebook saying it's the best room in the museum. Uh, which means something is lost uh, in terms of the educational value of, uh, of such exhibitions. Uh, but it's, again, you know, it's, it's a long story. It, it is just one of, uh, uh, one of many examples. I, I would say the most recent one is from yesterday. In fact, uh, I could have brought Gazeta Wyborcza, which is the main Polish daily newspaper. The whole of the front page 
uh, was about the uh, was about the uh, International Auschwitz Council, and apparently the government wants to uh, replace the head of the uh, of the of the council, who is Professor Barbara Engel King, uh, who is one of those critical historians of the Holocaust in Poland, who has also written about uh, you know the problems around the role of the Polish population in some of the mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, some of the stories. Uh, so she is very much under fire now as a um, as a critical historian. It is the same with Jan Grabowski, uh, who is. A, Another historian of, of the Holocaust mm -hmm. uh, um, 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 with a similar approach. Um, so yes, I would say museums are very much under pressure in Poland today. Some of the other academic institutions, uh, the, well, the Institute of National Memory is completely taken over by the nationalist right, so there is not much hope there. Uh, but there, there are many more critical voices from universities, for example, uh, and also voices in solidarity with, with academics who are, um, uh, um, uh, who are singled out um, for, uh, uh, for political attacks. Um, the Polish Academy of Sciences is one important institution. Uh, um, so the, uh, the the Polish Center for Holocaust Research is located in the Polish Academy of Sciences, and that is a very important institution um, uh, uh, dealing with the history of World War II in a critical way. But their funding has been under attack. Uh, so so there there are many. Many examples, many fronts in this in this bigger um, in this bigger struggle for the independence of um, of Polish historians, um, um, and I think you know the, the outcome is still is still open, but it is very much uh, in the center of public attention in Poland uh, these uh, these days, and you know I, I suppose normally in most countries. Uh, the question of which historian said what in which book is not the topic of a, of a front page headline, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but that shows the, the significance, the political significance oh. of those debates Obviously. in Poland now. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you very much. So, uh, we are happy to have had you here and we'll publish your talk on our page and then we'll see the reactions. I'm sure there will be some. Thank you again. And, uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat>